Finnish developer Remedy has a reputation, a style, a distinct voice when it comes to games and the worlds they create. Excellent third-person action and gunplay is their trademark. Bizarre, unique, and captivating worlds, story, and lore are never far behind. A marriage of two different ideologies which have produced some of my favorite experiences in gaming. Lead writer Sam Lake has become one of gaming's most prolific voices. HP Lovecraft, The Twilight Zone, The New Weird. Remedy titles, despite the grounded action, always have ties into something beyond, something odd, something that lies in wait beyond our limits of comprehension. Control is their latest foray into the strange, and their trademark marriage of story and outstanding action come together in a spectacular way. Control stars Jesse Faden, who after a brief introduction winds up as the new director for the Federal Bureau of Control, a mysterious government agency hiding in plain sight. A little bit of Men in Black, but from my taste, it's a lot more X-Files with the bureaucracy of an uptight government job. Jesse is guided in her adventures by a mysterious hitchhiker. It seems as if she's breaking the fourth wall, frequently speaking to a proverbial you during her journey. She will even internally discuss other characters and her opinions on them with you. Sometimes she will do this in the middle of them speaking. Now internal monologues are nothing new. In fact, it's become somewhat of a remedy trademark in regards to their main characters. This is the first time, however, where her monologues and conversations with this mysterious partner. Is it you, as in the player? This is when it controls many mysteries and also helps create a unique identity for Jesse as a protagonist. The supporting characters also do a great job of setting the table for one of the best ensemble casts a Remedy title has ever had. Emily Pope, Dr. Darling, Director Trench, the janitor Ati. So many characters, all with their own mysteries and motivations, and as you adventure deeper into the game, every answer you find is always greeted with another question. Every layer peeled back reveals something new. The game's basic premise is actually a very simple one. Jessie enters the oldest house to look for her younger brother who was taken by the FBC years ago. The oldest house is what the Bureau calls home. Their headquarters on the outside seems like any standard, nondescript government building. However, the oldest house is known as an object of power. Despite its normal appearance, the walls of the building itself can house alternate dimensions and bend itself beyond physical limits. It just so happens that she also isn't the only newcomer on this day. A force only known as the Hiss has invaded, and amidst this chaos, she will push you to find the answers she seeks. Jesse, the workers trapped in the oldest house, and the relationships between the paranormal and the Federal Bureau of Control make for Remedy's best world to date. Nothing is as it seems, and everything comes at you in angles that are unexpected. Control is a clear love letter to the weird pulp sci-fi tales from the 50s. A major reason the story hits so hard is due in part to how it's presented. Remedy titles have always been pretty linear experiences. Start to finish, you will start on one end and take in all of the game's story on your one-way path to the ending. This formula has always been their balance, and in certain cases such as Quantum Break, the way they handled story threw that balance off. Their best games have always struck a fine middle ground between moment-to-moment -moment action mixed with exposition and bizarre story elements. Control represents the biggest change in design philosophy for the studio. Control's basic genre is unabashedly a metroidvania, a genre with so much representation in the last decade that simply saying its genre isn't specific enough for a point of comparison. So for this review's sake, think Shadow Complex, not Symphony of the Night. It's also a genre that for the most part is done on a 2D plane. A style of game in this genre done in a fully realized 3D world comes with its own set of challenges. Navigation especially, a key component of the genre, can be tough to pull off. The actual location itself has to feel cohesive. This is perhaps one of the best parts of Control. The oldest house is one of the most compelling, unique, and bizarre worlds I've ever experienced. Every single new section feels like it belongs, and despite the seemingly boring setting of an office building, this location is anything but. Remedy also litters the world with smart design decisions to help ease players into it. A generous amount of fast travel points together with a well-designed map and it goes a long way. Control also features great signage and environmental clues that will help you get accustomed to the surroundings naturally. Control's world and story are brought to life with excellent gameplay. Control is a third-person shooter. The hook here is the shooting itself. 
Jesse has one weapon, and this weapon is very unique. This one gun can change forms into the standard archetypes you'd come to expect. Shatter is a devastating shotgun, Pierce is a long-range sniper rifle, Grip is a standard pistol, and so on. Now with Remedy, everybody knows your action is never that straightforward. Jesse can gain unique powers that make her feel like a superhero. Powers such as telekinesis, shields, and even mind control. These abilities and her exceptional movement push the combat to another level entirely. Remedy handles the expanded power set with finesse and grace. The core gunplay is as good as it's always been. It's one of their trademarks. Loud, powerful, and satisfying guns combined with great hit detection and enemy reactions. Powers can complicate that, especially if they feel clumsy to pull off. This is where control really separates itself from everybody else in the third person shooter space. They design action with core gameplay elements in mind to create harmony. The choice to have one gun that transforms, for example, isn't just a cool sci-fi hook. It works off of recharging ammo, and the standard reload button other shooters implement is used in control to swap between the two different forms. This small but important change opens up the controls and helps seamlessly incorporate an expanded power set without making it clunky. In late game fights, you will be dodging rockets while you're ripping off a piece of concrete and throwing it at a group of enemies as you shield yourself from their crossfire. Then you can leap and pop off a handful of headshots while mind controlling a sniper to help turn the tide of the battle. Each of these actions feels satisfying in their own right, but combined really makes something compelling. It also helps with a pretty great assortment of enemy types and avoids the problems most games with powers have late game. Most games with powers always decide to make combat challenging in a lazy manner. This manner is by introducing enemies that just prevent your powers from working outright. It's challenging, sure, but usually never fun. Control sidesteps that problem entirely by never introducing elements that take your power away. Instead, they mix up the enemy encounters that challenge players to use the entire toolset. It leads to a very rewarding sense of accomplishment and just feels good to do, even after hours and hours of combat. The core structure changing so much from a linear experiences of their past also brings other changes with it. Control features some slight RPG mechanics without straying into a loot and grind experience. Skill points come from completing various side quests, and you'll never have to sit and grind areas out for XP. In fact, if you just stick to the main story, you'll always be able to compete with the stronger enemies and complete the core storyline. However, the non-linear nature also can complicate the game in many unexpected ways. In a linear experience, all of the context for the story is laid out for you. Every player will see and experience all aspects of the plot in the same order. Control by its very nature subverts that. Some aspects of the core plot can seem more confusing and obtuse than they actually are if you don't explore the world and discover their secrets. Things that didn't quite make sense would have a clear cut explanation that I discover in a side quest after the fact. It's not really a problem, it's just a bit jarring to have the answers to some of the game's larger mysteries hidden away in parts of the map the main story will never take you to. On one hand, it can lead to an overall story that can feel disjointed, but on the other hand, the rewards for exploring and player discovery are very satisfying. Outside of some minor upgrades, almost every single side quest you decide to embark upon will reward you with a much deeper insight into the unique and strange world these characters inhabit. Visually, Control is a stunning accomplishment. Another Remedy trademark is their willingness to incorporate new graphic technology to push their gameplay forward. The intense particle effects and environmental destruction aren't just fancy tech thrown around to sell graphics cards, it's vital to the action. Most of the powers Jesse and the enemies use take advantage of the very environment itself. Launch for example. If you don't have anything around to grab, pieces of concrete, marble, and granite will be ripped dynamically from the world itself. The game never fakes anything you or the enemies use. Not only does it lead to very visually intense affairs, it also lends itself to dynamic combat and gameplay as situational awareness is used for more than just which piece of cover you're going to try to hide behind. Also unlike your previous games, Control also features a pretty fantastic post-story content to partake in. I don't want to spoil anything, but Control is the most replayable game Remedy has ever created. As I was thinking back on my time with Control, it's hard to come up with any real issues. 
Some of my gripes are core components of the Metroidvania genre itself and not so much with Control. For example, constantly respawning enemies when you need to backtrack for story purposes can get a little cumbersome after a while. Luckily, the combat is so much fun that it never felt like busy work, but dying at the end of a long multi-stage encounter will respawn you at your last control point, which usually mandates a quick jog back to where you were to start the fight over again. It wasn't an issue for me, however if you die in certain fights repeatedly I can see the lack of combat checkpoints becoming a problem for some. Overall, Control is a fantastic experience, one part Shadow Complex, one part Remedy Special Sauce, and all of it weird. It feels like the creation of a Remedy gaming universe, as Control has elements of Remedy's lineage in every aspect of its DNA, while embracing new design to create something truly unique. I give Control a 9 out of 10, I'm glad to see Remedy back at it, and after Quantum Break stumbled a little bit, Control reigns it back in and is one of their best games and is the most gameplay packed game they have ever created at the studio. I hope everyone enjoyed the review. If you like, you can watch and read the entire written and video reviews over at rectifiedgaming.com. Thank you everybody for 1500 subscribers. Once again, I could not do it without all of you. So have a good one. I hope you enjoy Control and I'll see all of you next time.